In today's video, we're going to talk about how to configure an email notification in a Jenkins pipeline using the email extension plugin. Are you new here? If you are, welcome. And if you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Darren Pope, and I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. You may have watched a previous video where I walked you through how to set up the Mailer plugin to send emails. The Mailer plugin is very, very simplistic. It does one and only one thing. On the other hand, the email extension plugin gives you a lot more things that you're able to set up and configure to make sending emails that much easier. To start with today, I have a Jenkins controller running 2.277.1. When it was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins, which includes the email extension plugin. Also to the controller, I have attached an agent with the label of Linux. And for today's example, I am using SendGrid to act as my SMTP relay. To get started, we need to set up our SMTP relay inside of SendGrid. And it's not so much that we're setting up an SMTP relay, but we're setting up the access to an SMTP relay. And the way that we do that is we log into our SendGrid account. You can set one up for yourself. You'll click on Email API, at least at the time of this recording, and click on Integration Guide. At this point, all you need to do is click on SMTP Relay. And from this point on, just follow the instructions. In this case, we have to create an API key that is going to be used as our credentials, our username and password set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an API key name called Jenkins-SMTP. And I'm going to click on Create Key and watch what happens down here on the password. When I click on Create Key, now we have a password, which also equates to the key that was created right here. So now we have our information to configure our controller. We have our server, we have our port, which we're going to use SSL, and then our username is API key, and then we have for the password, the actual API key that was generated for us. So let's go over to our controller and set this up. So we're going to click on Manage Jenkins and Configure System. And before we set this up, as we're scrolling down here under Jenkins Location, I want you to notice one thing. For our system admin email address, we have changed the default value, which is basically a nobody at nowhere type address. And we set it, in our case, to a no reply address. You can set it to whatever you want, but I recommend that you do set it to something. Now, to set up extended email, we need to go towards the bottom of this page. And let me show you what we're not going to set up. So we're going to go all the way to the bottom, and if you've watched the Mailer plugin video, what we set up during that time was the email notification. That's not what we're setting up now. What we're going to set up for extended email is right above it, typically, unless another plugin is offsetting it. We're looking for extended email notification. This is what we need to set up. So for our SMTP server, we are going to grab our name. Our SMTP port, since we're going to be using SSL, is going to be 465. And now let's click on Advanced, because this is where the username and password are. So for the username, we're using API key. For the password, we are going to use our password. So it ends in QMW. So I'll clean that out and then paste it in. And then we're also going to go ahead and select Use SSL. Now for the rest of this setup, I'm not going to make any other changes, but we're going to take a look at a few of the things that you could change. You could set the default user email suffix. You could change the default content type. Maybe you want all of your emails to be HTML instead of plain text. There's a list ID, which the help will explain that, 
hey, sometimes I need to set a list ID here. Or maybe I need to add a bulk precedence header. Maybe I want default recipients or a reply to list or an emergency reroute. All of these options are available to you through the extended email plugin. You can also set up a default subject. So if we were to send an email using extended email and we didn't set a subject, this would be the value of what would come along in the subject. Also, right now, with a minus one for maximum attachment size, that means an attachment could be unlimited. That might not be the best thing. You might want to set a reasonable size attachment size. Your email system may only allow for a five meg attachment, a two meg attachment. So just so you would always make sure that you're getting an email, you might want to change this to match what your email system uses. The other thing that you can do with extended email is you can apply pre and post send scripts. Now these are Groovy scripts, not to be confused with scripted syntax within pipeline, but legitimate Groovy scripts that you can do things with. We're not going to get into any examples today, but down below in the description will be links to the documentation of what this really means. And there are a handful of other checkboxes uh, for template testing or watching jobs. That's one thing I haven't mentioned yet. Within extended email, you can have templates for your emails. So you don't necessarily have to create all of your body from hand every time. You could create a handful of templates and reuse those templates within your pipeline. So you can simplify the creation and standardize, more importantly, the creation of your emails. So that's it. Now, here's one thing that's a little bit different than email notification. Within email notification, we had the ability to test the configuration by sending a test email. Unfortunately, within extended email, there is not that same ability. So let's make sure we've got everything else. There's our care set. That's it. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and click on save. Now, since we don't have the ability to test this, the way that we're going to test it is by actually running a job. So let's go and create a new job. And we're gonna call this email ext sample. We're gonna click on pipeline, click okay. And now what we're going to do is, we're just gonna use a sample pipeline, hello world. I'm going to change my agent to label Linux. And let's get our step created. Now, off the top of my head, I do not know the syntax for the step that we need to use. So I'm going to click on pipeline syntax. And the step that we're going to use is email ext. Again, if you are using just the mailer plugin, that step would be mail. But to be able to use everything that we just configured, we need to use email ext. Now for the two, I'm going to type my email address. For the subject, I'm going to say, this is the extended email test. And for the body, I'm going to use the same as the subject. And let's click on advanced. We can set reply to, attachment patterns, attach the build log. And in fact, let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to, I'm not going to worry about compressing it because I know this is going to be a small one. And if I wanted to have a pre-send or post-send script, I could also put that here. But let's assume that this is all that I want. So now what I have is email ext, a body, a subject, and a two. So let's go ahead and copy this and go back over to our pipeline. Let's paste it in and review it real quick. So what we can see here is we have email ext. I am going to go ahead and put a parentheses around it. That's my preference. You don't have to use parentheses. Attach log is true. I have a body. Extended test. I'm going to go ahead and just put one more, one more word on there. Body. And this is the for the subject. I'm going to go ahead and just put subject. And then I have my two and I'm gonna close my parentheses. Again, parentheses not required, I just like them. 
Let's click on Save. And then let's click on Build Now. If we see here, the job ran successfully. So that implies that everything sent correctly. Let's go check it out. And we can see here that the email was sent to us. And if we take a look at the build log, we can see that the build log was what was the build log for the job. So the build log was attached. We had our specific subject line. We had our specific body. So very simply, using email EXT within our pipeline, we received our email. So why would you want to use extended email instead of just the normal email notification? What we've seen here, we can set up some default subjects, de default bodies. We can also set recipients, which we didn't look at today. We can look at all sorts of different other options that the extended email gives us out of the box. And again, one of the things that I mentioned before is you can create email templates and use them within email EXT to simplify and standardize your email notifications. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, go ahead and leave us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell and you'll be notified anytime there is new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.